All right, all welcome. Thank you for joining again. Thank you for taking the time. Um, thank you for joining this Go Engineer uh, Tech Talk with uh, Dell and NVIDIA. Um, have some great content for you guys today, and hopefully you guys learned something new. Uh, let's see. There we go. Um, this is our second webinar, actually. We're planning on doing, uh, you know, one of these every quarter so that, so that we can refresh some of the content and kind of keep you guys up to date and show you some new configurations and uh, maybe, uh, you know, let you know about some of the new stuff that's coming down from Dell and NVIDIA and the graphics side of things and how it all marries with SOLIDWORKS. So, uh, so that, that's kind of the reoccurring theme of all these, of all these here. Real quick, uh, you know, that's me up there, Adam Hughes. I work with Go Engineer, uh, mechanical engineer and adjunct professor at USC. Um, I love both my jobs, but <laughs> SOLIDWORKS makes it easy because SOLIDWORKS is kind of like, I mean, it's mostly fun, right? Designing stuff and manufacturing yeah. stuff. Like it's, it's all about that. Next up is uh, Mike. Mike, you want to give us the, the lowdown? Yeah. Hey, everybody. Uh, Mike, uh, background is mechanical engineering. Uh, like I said, I'm based in Portland. And um, yeah, just kind of all about making stuff and working with my hands. Uh, I've been with NVIDIA coming up on a year now. Uh, spent some time with a cloud manufacturing platform as a startup prior to this and uh, been in the CAD space for most of my career. So super excited to get to know y'all today. And I'm Chris Ramirez from Dell. I am also a mechanical engineer. Uh, and uh, today I work in our precision workstation uh, line of business. So really this is all about the systems that we build for engineers to do engineering workloads. And, uh, you know, along with, with Adam and, and Mike have a, you know, really, you know, deep interest uh, in this field and uh, looking forward to having a conversation today. So thanks, Adam, and for inviting us and, and thank you all for coming. Yeah, and, and, you know, it's kind of funny because in our conversations, you can totally tell we're all engineers because we totally nerd out about the same stuff. <laughs> so <laughs> we're all guilty, right? Yep. All yes, right, so this is are. our... Uh, this is our agenda for today, right? We, we, well, I guess we just did the intro, but we're going to review the Dell uh, Go Engineer and Video Partnership. Um, the configuration of the day, we're, we're kind of highlighting some stuff on Visualize and what that means for your GPU and some enhancements you can do, some tips and tricks along the way. It should be kind of fun. And then um, we're going to run through how you can order your, uh, your systems, your configurations of your systems through the uh, Dell or Dell.com forward slash Go Engineer page, right, which is linked on our web page too. And then of course, Dell has that, that live on their page. And it's all there to, to, uh, to help direct you to pick the right type of configuration. And then also to give you a little bit of an incentive because we, we, uh, we're working with Dell and NVIDIA, right? So they're taking care of you. Absolutely. Cool. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, and it's convenient. And a lot of our customers already have seen, um, just the ease of use and, and you know, the completeness, I guess, for lack of a better word, of the configurations that we're offering. And, and it, just, it just makes it so easy, right? Yeah, man. So, <clears throat> so um, you know, there, you know, at, at the base of every um, design manufacturing, right, or design or manufacturing or, or some sort of uh, creative work, right, there, there is a goal or a common goal to improve something or design something new or design something fancy or improve, you know, improve on the last year's model or make something that does two for one or whatever you want to think about, right? Um, making something uh, stronger, cheaper, lighter, uh, more affordable, easier to manufacture, less waste, so on and so forth. Um, and SolarWorks certainly helps out a lot with that if you have the right turn right? <laughs> Um, making sure you're not crashing all the time or making sure if you're doing these visualized renders that you're, um, that you're not watching paint dry, right? That you have the proper hardware to, uh, to render your products, put them on the web page, and, and hey, maybe get some pre-sales or get some, some marketing hype behind them. And so one of, the, one, of the, you know, one of the things we think about is, oh, well, how do I design a better product? And I think we have that down. If we're all engineers. We've been doing this for a while. But one of the things we always forget is, you know, can having a better computer help me make better products faster or more efficiently, right? And absolutely, right? And sometimes, sometimes we need a little push from, from uh, a push on IT to get us some better computers. But, but really, this is, this is what's going to make 
um, or, or these computers, these configurations essentially uh, are going to help you do your job better in SOLIDWORKS and that's what we've specifically designed them for, right? SOLIDWORKS, visualize, simulation, um, all the things we use on a regular basis. Um, all right, so I think Chris is going to take yeah. it off from here. Roll with well, it. Yeah, so let's roll with it, guys. Uh, so, um, you know, we we introduced this uh, on the last uh, last call, and so um, you know, I, I won't belabor it too much because that recording is available for you to go off and and listen to. But but essentially, right between Mike, myself, and Adam, we, we realized that you know it takes a cohesive solution for you to get the most out of your hardware. And, uh, and the most out of your software licenses, including visualize and simulation. And so we've worked with, with Adam and team uh, to define some configurations that we know lock, stock and barrel are just going to fly through traditional workloads. And so uh, we've started this program called, uh, if we move to the next slide please, the, the Dell Expert Network. Um, and so this is where you go to dell.com uh, slash go engineer. This is a web page where you can actually see the configs that we picked for specific workloads. And we're going to go, we're going to dive into the details of two of the configurations today uh, with regards to visualize. Visualize is a very, very GPU intensive uh, application. And so that's why we also have Mike uh, from NVIDIA on is actually going to talk to you about, <clears throat> man, wh where am I going to get the best bang for the buck? Why should I put money into this and not that? Um, and that's what I'm all about is let's, let's make your system efficient. Uh, I don't want you to buy more than you need, but I certainly also want you to get uh, the max performance out of the software. So if Adam's doing a tutorial on how to do AI denoising, you've got enough to actually uh, use that. So the offer here is, um, you know, as a, a customer of Go Engineer, you get 5% off of these custom configs that we built that, you know, we all put our badge on the table and say, we know these will work for these particular workloads. So these are 5% off of the best price you can find on Dell.com. I'm actually going to show you how to get that extra 5% coupon. In addition, you get 3% off of uh, the rewards in the future process. But really, this is not about Honestly, I'm, I'm not appealing to you on, you know, this is the, the best price for this or that. I, what I'm appealing to you on is these systems are simply going to work for your workloads. We do have a dedicated Dell account rep with uh, Alicia Bowling. Um, so if you end up having some concerns or you want to buy multiple systems or something along those lines, you have a person who is assigned to this program who will always be assigned to this program in Alicia um, that we can get you connected to. Uh, some of the benefits are these quarterly webinars, and you know we're we're actually trying to do these monthly. Uh, we're committing to quarterly, but it would be great to do monthly, where we talk about a different config or a different subject matter um, uh, every month. And then lastly, you know, depending on on you know where you sit uh, in your corporation, in your company, right? If you need to finance hardware and software and those kind of things, Dell does have a Dell Financial Services, and so that is something that. Obviously not required, but if uh, it, you know if uh, turning something into kind of monthly payments makes sense, we also offer that option through the Dell Expert Network. So with that, let's jump into um, a little bit about you know the precision workstations. So so and SolidWorks, I spend an inordinate amount of time with them. Uh, you know they are by far the number one ISV that en engineering workstations are sold into, and uh, you know the cornerstone of of that is that mission critical reliability. And so these are the things that we're gonna be talking about uh, a bit with these configurations that we picked to kind of get the most out of, of, of Visualize. So let's go ahead and jump into that. So just a Rosetta Stone um, to, to give you an idea, you know, we've got basic intermediate and advanced categories of the configurations. And what we've tried to do is, is parse that out into what does that mean from a parts or assemblies or visualize or simulation. Um, you know, so if you're we're really gonna be focusing on the intermediate inter intermediate and the advanced categories today, which would be more than 500 parts, uh, you know, in your assemblies, uh, you're using visualize, uh, perhaps all the way up to using it for animated videos uh, for marketing, right? So, so nothing helps pre sell a product if you can show a photorealistic image of, uh, of said design. Um, and also, you know, these systems will uh, have the horsepower for, for simulation, but we're really going to be focusing on, on, on Visualize here today on the intermediate and the advanced. Hey, I'm just going to chime in here real quick, Chris, yeah. if you don't mind. Please. Um, so if you look at the basic, it says Visualize Simulation None. It's not that 
that the basic model won't run these tools. It's just that we want to make sure you're optimizing your time in workload, right? And so there might be a better solution for you. Like if you're going to use Visualize all the time, then you should be looking at intermediate or advanced. And that's, and that's because we don't want you wait, waiting for paint to dry, right? Um, although that GPU yep. is supported, um, it's, you'd be better off spending a little bit more money and then getting a lot more GPU power to do those visualized renders or a little bit more money in picking up Xeon processors and then you know, running simulations that way, if that, if that makes sense. And Mike's gonna talk about um, you know, some of the orders of magnitude from an improvement uh, performance when you're talking about you know, doing some of the, the visualize, visualization work, workloads where this is spend a, you know, a, a little bit extra money for a significant improvement in, in, in the workload. So that's what we're gonna be talking about. And uh, you know, the precision workflow, uh, work, workstation portfolio is massive. Not all engineers are IT experts and that's why I'm here to help you choose. So we've taken this list of our entire offerings and we've whittled it down to the next page. All right, this one. Uh, this one? There we go, thank you so much. Well, it, it showed up for a second and then it- there. Okay, I might have had those out of order, that's my fault. <laughs> no worries, no worries. So, um, on the dell.com slash go engineer, we have a couple of our configs uh, with the right memory and the right RAM and the right GPU and everything configured. And, um, you know, we talk about the needs. This is the, the intermediate um, configuration that we're talking about. But um, really, I want to get into Mike because Mike's got some really good meat to talk about, um, you know, how uh, uh, NVIDIA GPUs really allow for the acceleration of Visualize and particularly the AI denoising, which I think is a pretty incredible feature that uh, you know was released a couple of years ago that's now hopefully becoming more mainstream. So Mike, take it away. Yeah, cool. Thanks, Chris. Hey, everybody. Uh, again, you know, great, great to be here with you all. Uh, big, big fan of SolidWorks and, and all the amazing stuff that you all uh, design and manufacture every day. Uh, I got to say, you know, one of my favorite parts of being in this business is always walk in shop floors and seeing how uh, different companies kind of organize production and the challenges out on the floor. And uh, that's something I'm just, I'm just missing dreadfully. So uh, as, as soon as any of you all are able to start doing shop tours again, let me know because I got to get back out on the floor. Um, so if you go up, I think uh, let's, let's start at the first slide we had there. I think we got bumped forward a little bit. Cool. So um, you know, one of the big things about GPU acceleration is it's only as good as the software that takes advantage of it. So um, for all of the multi-threaded um, AI, different types of cores that we develop in the GPU, it's really a function of how much uh, our software partners take advantage of it. And we're seeing an incredible trend in uh, the software world to where companies are really uh, switching their code and taking a lot more advantage of these multi-threaded GPU processes because they see that the performance improvements aren't just percentage points, they're orders of magnitude. And they're orders of magnitude every single generation. And um, you know, as, as somebody that's spent their life you know, working with manufacturers and trying to figure out how to get better products into market faster and improve profit margin and drive top line growth through more innovative, iterative products. Uh, that's a huge, huge deal, right? And so um, some of the stuff that uh, my good friend at NVIDIA here, Don Breda, has worked with the SolidWorks team hand in hand to get better GPU acceleration for is um, just in, in core CAD. So the OpenGL pipeline for model viewport um, we've also got GPU acceleration in e-drawings for Pro VR. I know more and more people are starting to move to VR workflows uh, as we're remote. And then SolidWorks Visualize. And so let's, um, let's click through and just touch a little bit on what's going on for each one of these. There we go. Awesome. So SolidWorks, you can call it CAD, you can call it the authoring environment, but you know, fundamentally we're talking about SolidWorks modeling. And um, the real problem here was that through SOLIDWORKS 29, 2019, the graphics pipeline was just simply not super scalable, right? You're limited to the throughput of your CPU and complex models and large assemblies uh, had to reduce the level of detail. So anybody that's worked with an assembly over, 
let's say a few hundred parts uh, definitely knows this. And those of you that have tried to do any kind of bigger plant design or uh, you know, transportation device, anything in aerospace, really uh, are, are keenly aware, I think, of, um, of the challenges of working with these large assemblies. And you just, you can't get around it. And sometimes you spend half the time just trying to simplify things so you can see everything on screen, either to make a presentation or just to get a sense of how the different mechanisms are going to integrate and what your overall uh, design is, is going to do. Um, so with this enhanced graphics performance, uh, in 2019, we introduced the optional beta mode for improved GPU scalability. And in 2020, it makes it the default. So, um, and then with, with 2021, it's gonna further uh, improve the scalability. But ultimately what we wanna do is enable you to work with whatever size assembly you need to and not have hardware limitations be an issue. And so we're continuing to work closely with Dassault and the SolidWorks team to really accelerate every single aspect we can because we realize that the more you can get on screen, the better decisions you can make, the more you can evaluate the overall design, and ultimately the faster you can get your products to market. And that's what it's all about, right? Okay, sweet. So let's move ahead to the next one. Um, so just curious, either by chat, show of hands, or comments, who's, uh, who's tried the eDrawings Pro VR? I have. Chris, Chris has. <laughs> I see some folks are having issues with audio, or was that just? Uh, no, it's good now. That's just actually, if you effect. come, if you come to a Go Engineer event, chances are we'll have a VR headset. Um, we we've had them in the past, uh, and so you can try Pro VR too if you'd like. But it's it's pretty wicked. Like it, you don't realize how awesome it is until you put the VR headset on. One, just VR is impressive, and then two, when you actually see your CAD model walk around it, it's it's really cool. So if you guys can try it, I would. I love the being able to just press a button and have it have the exploded parts view. Uh, you know, looking through an assembly, it's like that's just that's just great. You know, back and forth, one button, get the exploded view, get your rotate, check out your model, see what you're talking about. You know, it, it certainly is is useful for more than just you know a uh, product review. Uh, it, it's useful now in, in in product design. And just ahead, one Mike. of those things that's just simply not possible any other way, right? Yep. You see people's body language the first time they go through an experience like this and it's just mind blown right and um, something we're hearing more and more is customers with styled goods or any kind of industrial design aspect to their their process uh, their design team is actually getting outfitted with VR rigs in the home and they're doing design reviews and early styling evaluation for CMF you know color material finish they're doing all that stuff remotely and if you think about um, yeah, there's a lot of overhead now that we're all remote. We can't be in the office and hold uh, appearance models or, or you know, first-gen prototypes, DVT prototypes. Um, but it actually kind of speeds things up, right? Because now we can make more decisions with photorealism. We can evaluate what a product's going to look like. Yeah, you can't hold it in your hands, but when you can walk around an exploded view and, and see every single detail and every aspect of, of how that thing's going to come together, uh, you actually start talking about reducing the, the lead time and starting to shorten some of these product milestones because you don't have to go through a first or second physical prototype. So um, anyways, eDrawings, we know everybody uses it. It's, it's widely applicable around the world. Um, 2019, kind of a similar thing. We introduced the beta VR capability or SOLIDWORKS introduced the beta VR capability. In 2020, the production uh, SPO went in and in 2021, we've got performance improvements and other improvements hidden uh, behind an environment variable. So really just want to encourage everybody, um, check it out, take a look at it, talk to your boss, talk to your IT department. If you're involved in any kind of uh, the design review process or sign off, um, it's, it's really a worthwhile investment there. Yep. And it's a nice collaborative tool, right? I mean, like that's at the end of the day, you know, everyone can work together. Use and that's it. huge, right? Yeah. Yep. And it's hard to get everyone together to see a physical prototype these days, um, but being able to parse through that physical, uh, a virtual prototype, you know, inside of VR, you know, as long as you've got the bandwidth and the right system with the right horsepower, uh, you know, it's it's completely possible. Yep. Yeah. And we, yeah, I think in, in this space, collaboration is a, a term that sometimes can be overused, but when you really think about it, it's it's making decisions as a group, right? And making better decisions and not just leaving those decisions to one person, but 
um, being able to, to really weigh the trade-offs, decide on something, see it, and, and feel with 100% confidence that you've done the right thing. And ultimately, that's um, if you go back to the visualize slide there, as we, we switch over to talk about um, you know, what visualize does for you is uh, the two aspects, and Adam touched on this. You know, one is just upfront design reviews, right? Making sure that you're heading down the right path before uh, you make a final material selection or before you pick uh, which, which paint vendor you're going to go with, uh, what type of injection molded plastic you're going to choose. Um, but then also is, is speeding time to market by getting marketing collateral out the door. Uh, we're talking to more and more customers that are having issues hitting their product launch deadlines, uh, not because the product isn't ready. Sometimes that's it. They've got uh, some backlog with getting uh, first article shipment. Uh, procured, and that's holding up their photography process for generating marketing content. So whether it's going on the website or a brochure or a catalog, um, they're just, they can't take pictures because there's not a product on the table to look at. And uh, with, with what this uh, new capability in SolveWorks Visualize unlocks, you can produce that stuff on the screen. And so now the CAD assets can be generating the marketing content and collateral in parallel rather than a serial process where you're having to wait. So it's not just about let's make the right decision up front and, and ensure that we've got everything dialed in from a aesthetics and CMF perspective, but it's also let's make sure that the market demand is there and let's make sure that when this thing does hit the store shelves, consumers, uh, customers, whoever it is, have had a chance to look at it, evaluate it, fall in love with it, decide that it's the right thing that's going to help their business. And uh, Well, Mike, talk to me a bit about you know, so, so if I was using a, a K-series GPU, so, um, you know, of a couple generations old or, yep. Yep. you know, a, a Pascal series, you know, what's, what's new um, from a, a, a GPU perspective that, that makes these significant changes? Yep. Uh, that's actually a great question, Chris. Let's bump ahead a slide. So we've got, so this is just a, a quick visual representation of the, the kind of fidelity that you can get out of Visualize. Amazing yeah, stuff amazing. with the wood grain, the leather. Uh, yep. And then we've got a, a performance chart there on the next slide. So thanks for bumping me ahead, Chris. Um, but this, you know, talks about kind of the sort of improvements you can see. And it's not just the speed up of the card. Uh, we do a lot of work on the software that underlies these things. So the AI algorithms that the denoiser is using, which is part of uh, what we call our optics engine, uh, which infers uh, render traces from hundreds of thousands of pre-rendered images and then applies them to whatever you're rendering on the screen. So you get that three, you know, two, two and a half, three X improvement. Uh, but then you also get the intangible optimizations of the software under the hood as well. Chris or, or Adam, anything you guys want to comment on kind of what you've seen with generation over generation improvements? Oh, yeah. I mean, just just generally speaking, uh, you know, GPU power is just exponentially growing and it continues to, to grow at that rate, right? Like, you know, it's compared to CPU power, I suppose, you know, um, it's, one, it's not it's not easy just to add a second CPU into your rig to make it run faster, right? It's not like a second CPU slot, but you can do that with a GPU pretty easily. Um, but yeah, just GPU power, um, all together for, for since Visualize came out in 2016 till now, um, it's it's pretty fantastic. And I've been testing a RTX 4000 and 5000. Um, so I think the 4000 runs at like, what's the MSRP on 4000? 800 bucks, 800 ish, right? Something like that. I think so. Cheaper than that, but yeah. Yeah, yeah 600, maybe 700. Um, and then you go up to like a 5000, it gets a little bit more expensive. But man, I, I gotta tell you, I'm super impressed with, with even the 4000. You know, with it being a single slot card, just how fast it runs visualized. Like I was blown. I, I like I expected less, and I got a whole lot more than I thought out of that four thousand. And, and I'm doing some benchmarks, and they'll be out soon. But, but uh, yeah, really, really happy with with that four thousand card. Yeah, and, <clears throat> and I'll, I'll uh, add in right. So <clears throat> on top of simply the you know, the, the performance, the fact that most of you are probably utilizing 4K monitors at this point, right? And the ability to do the pixel fill as fast as you need it to do inside of Visualize, right? Where you're doing, yeah, these renderings. And, and the fact is that there really was no real-time ray tracing element to 
visualize uh, until we got to the latest versions with RTX. It's not that I can tell you were orders of magnitude faster. It's simply you couldn't do that workflow before, and now you can, right? Where in the past, if you're, you know, marketing people had said, hey, can you start off from kind of, you know, these, these coordinates with the camera and zoom in and then have it explode and do this, you're looking at, you know, days worth of work. Right. And, and now it's, you can say, Oh, sure. Let me just rotate the view inside of visualize. And, you know, you get the little static as it's doing this denoising and boom, it's got the, it's got the visual that, that you were asked for. So um, I'm really interested in, in Adam, your experience with just not just making existing workflows faster, but just these new type of workflows that uh, you just weren't capable of before inside of, of SolidWorks because you didn't have the software or the hardware. Yeah. I, I think, I think it was like, I, there was just so many things that were good about it. It was just kind of like bundled up into one sweet, like, I don't know, pastry. And I was just, I was just eating it up, dude. Like I, like I was, I loaded up visualized and I was like, whoa, this is completely different. And then I was like, whoa, that works way faster. And it was just like one wow after another, after getting an RTX card, because I've never had an RTX card um, up until recently. So yeah, the RTX cards are wicked fast. We do have a question. Um, yeah. It says, um, aside from a uh, aside from a speed, do the newer Turing or Ampere cards offer different rendering features that would not be accessible with older Kepler, Maxwell, and Pascal cards within Visualize? I I have a little answer, but go I don't ahead. think it's the full one. Mike, what do you got? No, go ahead, Adam. Oh, uh, so the only thing that that pops into my head with that is um, with some of the older cards, the G, the the VRAM, the video RAM on your graphics card is lower. Uh, just generally speaking, there's lower across the board. And you need at least three gigs of VRAM to run AI Denoiser, which was an improvement in 2018, I believe, 2018, 2019, somewhere in between there. And so when you have a GPU that has more than three gigs of RAM, you can turn on Denoiser, which gives you 10, up to 10x um, rendering speeds, right? Because it blends the pixels. Um, maybe, maybe you can speak to AR Denoiser because you, you probably know it better than I do, Mike, but I, I just relate it as blending pixels to get you a better image faster. I'm sure there's something more, more to that. Than yeah, I mean, you're, you're inferring pixels, right? So you're, you're saying if I've got these three pixels rendered and this one in between it, I'm going to interpolate what that's going to end up looking like based on all of the other uh, images that the AI algorithm has, has developed in the past. But to, to answer the question, we're um, improving every single thing we can, generation over generation. So whether it's the size of the frame buffer, the VRAM, uh, the overall memory, uh, we've got a number of different types of cores um, in each chip. Some are purpose-built for ray tracing, some are purpose-built for data processing or for AI. And um, our, our team of genius engineers and uh, hardware scientists are doing everything they can every single generation. So it's not like a generation comes out and it's just, uh, you know, kind of the 27, 2007 Taurus to the 2014 Taurus where maybe it's a different model uh, body style, but the engine's effectively same. These are entirely new generations of cards and that's why we, we call it a new generation. So it's not just incremental, it's, it's a significant evolution. Well, and, and Mike, you know, for those that, that don't, operate in, in this mode like like you and I do on a, on a daily basis, right? Uh, they may not be familiar with the ray tracing cores, which are absolutely brand new inside of Turing and Ampere, all right? So, so these are, that's aside from speed, and we've been, we've been talking about generationally faster speeds, and uh, so, so it seems like Wesley has that part, but talk a bit about the RTX cores, um, you know, and, and what you're able to do with the ray tracing cores and perhaps some of the AI cores and things that you don't have inside of uh, Pascal, Kepler, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. So the, the Turing, thanks, Chris. That's a, a great yep. thing to, to delve into. The Turing architecture, which we released, uh, what was it, about 18 months ago, was the first ever uh, GPU that enabled uh, real-time ray tracing. And so that was the RTX capability. And what that means is actually tracing the path of a photon as it moves from the light source into the object you're looking at, uh, deals with any refractive properties or um, uh, emissive properties of that particular 
object that it's hitting and then bounces off as if it were a physical photon in reality. And so that is uh, essentially what is ray tracing and was long held to be kind of a holy grail of computer graphics and visualization. And people thought it was going to be another 10 years. And uh, at the time, NVIDIA surprised the whole world by bringing this stuff out. And um, we're really just now in the last six to 12 months starting to see the software that takes advantage of this stuff. And it's, it's truly jaw dropping because you are able to spin a model in real time and see what that thing looks like and really see what it looks like, not just kind of a hokey CAD render like maybe we're all used to, but with the fidelity of the images you see on screen here and um, might actually be a good time to transition into the video just to take a look at what some of that uh, okay. demo on and off looks like. So, yeah, yeah. But and hopefully that's like, an okay explanation of, of the ray tracing stuff, but it's a, it's a big, big game changer. And now that we're starting to see it more and more places, it's just incredibly exciting. Is there a short and sweet to the difference between a, a, a CUDA core and an RT core, a ray tracing core? Uh, ray tracing is for visualization and CUDA is for high power compute. Okay, cool. Yeah, perfect. Maybe a little short and oversimplified, but. I'm seeing the video, guys. You've got it? I'm seeing it. Okay. So there's a little bit of preamble here, uh, but this is the AI intelligence denoiser. This is a video that was produced by SolidWorks. We're talking about 10x faster. And, uh, you know, classic scenario you want to do some product evaluations, uh, you know, maybe it's marketing, maybe in this case, it's for some investors. You see the denoising there uh, on the left is off and you see how you kind of got the grain and the, the resolution and this is real time. It's just so much quicker that it resolves to a final image. And so as you pan zoom and rotate around the scene to get a view at whatever it is, the internals of uh, that beautiful uh, gearbox there, even things like this high watch, um, you see how much quicker the denoiser resolves the, the scene. And so it's really about going from that grainy kind of somewhat finished uh, view to a fully, uh, full fidelity, fully path traced view. And one thing, Mike, that, that you didn't state specifically, but I, I you know, for, for those, we, we got all different classes of, of people joining as far as where they're at in their, in their engineering career. <clears throat> I just want to call out, you know, the, the real time ray tracing allows for photorealistic imaging. And that's that's really the the you know to 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 draw the to connect the two dots of what is my what are my what do my RT cores give me photorealistic imaging in real time, and and so uh, you know you're not having to set it up to a render farm and wait hours and hours or days for <laughs> for a, a a render to work for you to see something like a photorealistic render you're able to do that in real time, and uh, and that really opens up uh, some of the possibilities and so when you look at the configurations like what we're showing here on the slides right now, what you're going to see is uh, a lot of the configurations stay the same. The CPU configurations stay the same. Perhaps the storage is roughly the same, but the GPU, we see a significant increase in the GPU. And that's where uh, Adam and myself are advising you to, to put your excess, you know, put your, put your additional monies toward that type of config because you're going to get uh, additional performance. And so, you know, this is the intermediate um, uh, config and I'll show you this on Dell.com here, here shortly. And then here's the advanced. And mainly the difference is the, the GPU class. Now we do go up on, on memory. And so Adam might touch on this a little bit later, you know, where the default on the kind of intermediate, we've got 32 gigs of memory and on the advanced, we start off at 64. You can go up higher if you know that you need that. But really what you see us do is, is we've locked in a minimum spec on the GPU. So for the 5820, the minimum spec that we've locked in from a GPU is an RTX 5000. So Adam was talking a bit about that, his personal experience uh, at kind of the, the higher end of the stack. And the, the Precision 7750. So this is um, <clears throat> a lot of people working from home. A lot of people wanting to have you know, the ability of not lugging around a, a, a 20 pound tower, but they want the max performance. So you can actually get up to an RTX 5000 inside of a laptop today. And uh, you know, a lot of folks who are just now looking at systems, this system is as fast as towers were of last generation. 
and particularly because of the work that, that we're able to get out of the GPU in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, I would have zero hesitancy in recommending if you were a superpower user for SOLIDWORKS that the 7750 would do what you wanted it to do. And so, um, you know, Adam, Mike, do you guys have anything else you kind of want to want to add on uh, from a configuration perspective before we, we go to the website and actually look at the parts? I, j I mean, it's just, it's just, you know, this idea of, I think of just being rock solid, right? You, you buy a dishwasher, you just want the thing to work. You buy a computer, you just want the thing to work. And uh, you, this is obviously a much more complex situation because you've got to manage the demands of the software that you're running. Uh, but Adam and Chris and the Dell and Go engineer team have taken care of that. And so if I'm a, you know, I'm an engineer and I just want something to work, the, my decision's made for me, right? I think that's the beauty of it. Yeah, I'll tackle that, that RAM, that RAM kind of um, shout out you kind of threw earlier. Yeah. Um, the reason why the, the RAM goes up between the, the intermediate and the, the advanced is because um, a lot of the times, well, for one, you, you need more RAM if you're opening up a bigger file. That's just how it works, right? Now, 64, that magic number, it really depends on, on your guys' files and what you're using and how you're designing. And if you're using, like, you know, coping and, and weld mints and you have inner and outer faces and surfaces, more tessellation, more graphics triangles, all that jazz. I'd be pretty, I don't think I've ever seen anyone tap out 64 gigs on a SOLIDWORKS model, right? But I have gotten, I'm just opening a SOLIDWORKS model rather, but on simulation, I've run up my computer to like 34 gigs on meshing for a simulation. Yep. And so it's just, it's just sitting there, it's typed in the mesh, it's really fun. I got lots of refinements in there and I see it creeping up and I was thinking, man, if I have 32, you know, I, I would be screwed, right? Um, and so yep. if you're doing really complex um, simulations, that's where we need some more RAM just for the meshing. And then um, if we talk about VRAM, um, in terms of visualize, right? Uh, the more VRAM you have, obviously you want to get past that three gig marker, which, which we do, three gigs of VRAM, I think in almost every configuration. Um, but with 16 gigs of VRAM with like an RTX 5000, what that means is you can open up a higher tessellated model uh, in visualize. Uh, therefore, it like you know, your edges and corners look ultra smooth, right? So um, most people would be able to tell if something has low tessellation or high tessellation uh, until you see like someone deliberately break it and then you can see how choppy it is, right? Like I, we, like I could go in and say, you know, reduce the tessellation on this, on this spherical object and it'll, then it'll come out like a, like a hexagon or like a polygon looking thing, right? But um, so if you are use, if you do have very large files that you plan on rendering them, then, it, then you might need to look at that, um, you know, RTX 5000 just so you have enough VRAM and you don't run out, right? Especially with animations. So that's my short and sweet on that. Hopefully that was, that answered some questions there. I think you um, hit on some of the questions. Actually, Wesley asked a, a, a question in the, the chat. So I'll give you a chance to digest that while we get some of Mike's feedback. But I think, Adam, you were answering it as, as he was asking it. So um, Mike, what did, what did you have on top of that? You know, I, I, uh, I think Adam nailed it. I'm not going to try to add anything there. Yeah, so it, yeah. Uh, so Wesley, that was a good question. And thank you for asking that. Um, the question is, is there a metric for determining RAM such as using the number of polygons because having 5,000 parts may be an issue if they don't have as much complexity? Right, yeah, so complexity is definitely a thing. Um, so, so just those two differentiators between motherboard RAM, like MOBO RAM is how I would like say it if I was, if I was in you know, like a training session or something um, versus VRAM. Motherboard RAM for simulations and opening up the SOLIDWORKS file, VRAM, uh, SOLIDWORKS will use VRAM, but it won't use 16 gigs of VRAM. It's, it's, it, it, it won't spool that much up. But if you're using um, if you're using Visualize, then that's really where that 16 gigs of VRAM comes yep. into play, right? Yeah, and and you know, with that, you know, there are some use cases, and you know, Mike, uh, I'll, I'll toss it to you. I, I, this may not be something that, that you all experience right now, but right, you have the ability to link multiple GPUs together to actually double your VRAM. So if you find yourself in a state where you've got an absolutely massive model and you need to render something, but you need upwards above 16 gigs of, of VRAM, there are actually ways to do that. Mike, do you mind kind of telling us a bit about that? Yeah, I think the from a use case perspective, you know, one one of the places we see this become necessary is 
uh, doing LIDAR scans and working with point clouds. So any kind of um, uh, you know, plant design, oftentimes you've got to do a scan for kind of an as-built to get things uh, where they are. Sometimes in automotive for aftermarket stuff, you'll see scans. Uh, but that's that's one example of where you'll you'll kind of start to move up into yeah, this Yeah, kind of and what's that called? Oh, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to chime in. Our, you know, Go Engineer has scanning. We do scanning. We sell scanning software to it. A lot of our scanning team, um, because they have such a high workload and they have just limited time during the day, I think all of them have RTX 5000s in their laptops, and I'm so jealous. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, what kind they're of all, scanners? What kind of scanners do they use? The Creaform scanners. Yeah. Cool. And then they use Geomagics and Geomagics for SolidWorks. There's one other one I forget. It's not, that's the other software that they use for, for point cloud data. And with Visualize, um, I was going to make a connection between what I saw back in the day to where, what I see now. So, you know, in 2016, you know, it was relatively new for me. So I was just soaking up all this information, right? And I was going to different Visualize customers like Honda, R&D, and, and some render houses that had these massive, you know, like render boxes, essentially. Um, and what I would see in those render boxes is like four 1080 TIs, right? Just massive power consumption or, or two or three 2080 TIs or, you know, three or four, um, you know, P3000s, 4000s just stacked up, right? And they weren't necessarily using them for SOLIDWORKS. They were just using them for the CUDA course, right? Um, and... And you need to think about how much money they invested in that and see what those other four cards were trying to do. Yep. <laughs> um, you know, it's just, it's just absurd. And then, and then there is diminishing returns. So you don't get 4X processing power when you put four, or, or a GPU power when you put four GPUs in on a motherboard. You got maybe two 16 slots, an eight slot, and a four slot. And then so, so as, as you stack, like the first two, you, you get double and the second one, you get, you know, 80% of that one. And the next one, you get 40% of that one. I, I don't know if those, the actual percentages, I have to do a benchmark, but, but that's, that's the general kind of theme. Um, and then the capability of adding, like, you know, if you really do need these, you know, two RTX cards um, in parallel, you can double your processing power, um, double your critical core count, double your ray tracing count, and then your, your VRAM actually runs in RAID or an equivalent RAID. It's not the right word, but but uh, the the, um, the virtual the, link. <clears throat> yeah, the virtual uh, RAM. The the the, uh, the VRAM is works together, right? So you have even though you have two cards, you just have sixteen gigs of RAM. And that's yep, how that and I'm actually going to show you uh, in in fifty eight twenty. Uh, I'll actually show you we've got the option right now. We've got it configured with one RTX five thousand, but I'll show you that it can be configured with dual GPUs uh, to specifically call out that point, Adam. But before we do that, I think you got a couple slides, Adam, and you wanted to, oh, to, to talk a bit about. I did. I didn't know if you wanted to get yeah, in there. Yeah, go for it. Okay. No, cool. no, 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 no. Um, I was just going to nerd out a little bit about some extras, right? And I, I think I think. Uh, you know, when it comes to hardware, we have these really awesome computers and we spend a lot of money on, on, you know, on having all the right gear. And we forget about the little stuff, right? Um, one of them being like 3D connections. I actually reached out to them. Um, maybe next time we'll have a coupon code for you all so that you can go try one of these out. But the 3D connection space, space mounts, I have one right here. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, yeah. You can kind of see the blue ring. This lets me rotate my model with my left hand so I can zoom, pan, rotate, roll. Uh, manipulate the model all with my left hand and then do my clicks with my right hand. And so it takes a lot of load off of, off of what my right hand would normally be doing. Plus there's some things that are just kind of awkward. Like you'll have to left click and then center mouse click and then, <laughs> and then move around at the same time using like two fingers. It's a little weird. I mean, I've gotten used to it, but uh, the 3D connection stuff is really nice and it's relatively affordable. It's like a hundred bucks you can get um, a 3D mouse. Um, probably take you about two weeks to get really good at it. But man, when you get good at it, you look like a wizard. It's like, you know, when you're in SOLIDWORKS and you're doing, you're like, oh, what are you doing different? And you're so much more productive. I'm still so, in my learning phase on that <laughs> for 3D it still, connections. It still just amazes me that everybody doesn't use that. I, I, I really, I cannot believe that you would do CAD all day and not have one of those. Which is, yeah. Yeah, it's yep. just incredible. Yeah. 
you know, and, and a fun story about the, the space maps is that, you know, you can't do, like, in order for you to do, if you're working on, like, circular objects, like a wheel, so I, I was helping this customer who makes custom wheels, renegade wheels, and um, in order to get to the opposite side, you'd have to do, like, a rotate and then a flip, right? So it's, like, two operations, or you could do a rotate about with the center mouse click and then rotate again. It's just, and if you're doing that all day long, it's just crazy, especially if you're programming, like, on a CNC, and you're selecting these different edges instead of, instead of rotating and flipping, rotating and flipping, rotating and flipping, rotating. You're, you're just taking the mouse and you're just kind of just toggling it just a little bit. And that whole model just shifts, right? So it's like you can do two things at once. You, you can actually do like five things at once in reality. You can spin and rotate and wobble. I don't, I don't have the throughput in my brain for that. I used to. Uh, but yeah, two things, yes. Five things, prob probably not. I don't know about Mike. But it just, uh, it just gets to be second nature. Like it's just... You spend enough time in it and you just kind of like, do, 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 do. especially when you got to show off software. I was working with some on a demo with some of our guys the other day and they're like this herky jerky pan and navigation. I'm like, dude, what, why don't you just, just zoom in there? He's like, oh, my mouse. I'm like, you really? You don't? Oh, come on. So I know what I'm getting that guy for Christmas, though. It's an easy right. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, and, and you heard that Adam wants, uh, you know, maybe he needs an RTX uh, 6000. So you, you ought to hook him up, Mike. So we got the a, a six thousands are coming into his office. Come, uh, coming soon. You guys are just pulling my chain. Back. I know how this works. <laughs> like, they're they're getting me all excited. The customer benchmarks we got back are like two to five X. I can't wow. wait. Uh, yeah. Those, those are going to be crazy. awesome. It's crazy. Yeah. So, so that's my tidbit on 3D connections. It's, it's a hundred bucks, probably the best hundred dollars to spend. Um, and really robust. I've dropped mine a couple of times, you know, so they're not fragile. Um, the next one is this multi-monitor. So I just have this like generic three, three, three set monitor up there, but SolidWorks will span multiple monitors. A lot of people forget this. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so you hit that little pan button there at the right. And that, that's only available if you have two monitors. If you don't have two monitors, that icon is not there, right? Um, it'll actually go three monitors, although my third monitor is set up, um, not landscape. But, but yeah, you, you, can, you can send parts to the right, send parts to the left. You can take features from the, from the part on the right and then drag and drop them on the part on the left and then vice versa. You can take components, drag and drop, um, mm -hmm. copy, paste. It's just a really great way to, um, to visualize some of the things that are, that are normally windowed, right? So you have to tab in between each one of them, but if you can separate them out, then you can look at both at the same time. It's also really good for taking certifications. I'm definitely a certification guru, I guess. That's what, that's what you have to do. You take a whole bunch of certifications to get elite. So I'm proud of that. That's, that's my, little, my little tidbit there. That, that's the, uh, this is the little widget. When you take enough certification, SolidWorks gives you something, Ooh, right? I like um, it. But if you're taking the certifications, it's almost a mandatory that you have two screen phones for the test one for, for SolidWorks. So two screens, that's my tidbit there. You can pick up monitors for super cheap and you can run them at different resolutions too. Um, I also I'm have gonna, like, yeah, I want to hear this, but then I want to step in because I do want to share the website. So, so let's do this slide and then I'll share the website real fast. Yeah, this is my last one. All so right. real quick, three visualized tips. One, set up a default template. Most people, um, have a blank, a blank template. What is a template? It's your studio, right? So when you walk into a photography, when you, when you walk into a photography studio and get your picture taken, they already have the backdrop, they have the lighting, they have everything set up, the camera's on the tripod, you walk in front of their snap, you got it, right? Same idea with the visualized template. You have your light set up, you have your scene set up, you have all the colors that you, or all the appearances and materials that you normally use in your, in your frequently used list. You have all your cameras, all the different cameras, your front top, left, uh, front top, left, right, ISO, left ISO, all that stuff you put on your marketing content. General, generate all that, delete your visualized model and just save it as a template. So it's a blank canvas, right? And then put the link into this bucket. That's my visualized yep. tip one. Visualized tip two is you actually have to turn on denoiser. So if you have a GPU that has more than three units of VRAM, you have to go to your options, select 3D view port and then turn on denoiser. And then there's a little slider at the bottom that allows you to enable denoising after a certain amount of passes. Mine said at 10, I think I was, goofing around and just trying some stuff. My recommendation is probably somewhere between 50 and 100, right? So after 100 passes, then the, pl the pixels will blend, right? As opposed to after 10, there's not, not much blending going on at 10 because there's not much pixels at 10. But um, at about 50 or 100, you can, you can slide that bar left to right, depending on how much GPU power you have. Um, and uh, show button and main toolbar is also kind of nice. You can toggle the noise on and off. The last one there is your UI settings. So if you are a SOLIDWORKS user, 
Um, it's going to be really helpful and visualized to change your, your UI, your navigation stuff, like your control center mouse button to pan and then center mouse button to rotate. And all that jazz, uh, switch that over to SolidWorks CAD and that way it'll feel just like SolidWorks when you're in visualize. Yep. yep. Those are my That's three perfect. tidbits on, um, on visualized tips. All right. Well, if you will quit sharing, I will start sharing, Adam. Sure. All right. Okay. So guys, I'm going to quickly show you, um, you know, what, what it is, um, what the process looks like to go through dell.com slash go engineer. So hit go to dell.com slash go engineer. Are you guys seeing my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Um, I've got it on this second screen above me. All right. So you go to dell.com. One thing we have seen is um, customers, uh, we're getting good traction. You guys are coming out here and buying sites, but you're not going through and getting the coupon. And uh, guys, it's it's a free 5% off the, the, the pricing below. So hit the get coupon. It'll take you to a site, type in your email address. I actually went ahead and, and did this to one of my, my personal email addresses to my uh, Gmail account. It does show up under promotions. So you do end up, if you do send it to your Gmail account, go to promotions, and then there it is, exclusive offer. So, um, and then you take that coupon code and you copy it and you'll actually put that into your order whenever you're, you're buying the system. But if we come back up here to uh, the site, you'll see the configurations. The first config are kind of the, the, um, the more basic configs. Then uh, we've talked about the intermediate, the 3640 and the 5750, so mobile and tower. And then the, uh, you know, the highest end 5820 and the 7750. So if you were to click on the 5820, um, for instance, right? So these are where Adam and Mike and myself have said, you know, the, the minimum config for this experience, we're going to set at an RTX 5000. We're gonna set it up with um, a 14 core processor with an RTX 5000. But what you'll see is there's actually the ability to go dual. So if you feel like you need more VRAM, so you need 24 gigs of VRAM, you can go to an RTX 6000. If you need 48 gigs of VRAM, you can go to an RTX 8000. And then if you're really crazy and you need um, 96 gigs of VRAM, you could actually do a dual RTX 8000. I doubt anyone on the phone here is going to need that, but I want you to show that to show you that that, that overhead is 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 capable of being achieved with this system. Um, the memory we've started off at 64 gigs, uh, as Adam was talking about, right? You could use more, you could use less. Um, there are some simulation, like if you're a so Simulia user, it's not uncommon to have a, a, a half terabyte or a terabyte or more of, uh, of system memory uh, for some of your simulation work, if you're doing that. Um, so from a storage controller perspective, you're able to, uh, we've defaulted this as, at a one terabyte PCIe NVMe drive. Adam actually didn't hit what I thought he would to talk about storage speeds actually mattering when it comes to loading up models. Um, so I, I may pitch that over to, uh, to Adam to, to, to do that, but basically I'm never gonna recommend you having a spinning drive for your engineering workload. Uh, I'm, I'm going to recommend uh, SSDs, uh, at least class 40, if not a class 50, um, because loading up these models is, is something that, you know, again, you, you don't want to be watching the paint dry, as Adams would say. And if you're working in a defense area where you need to have those, system, those uh, drives be secure encrypted devices, you're able to also uh, apply that to an SED drive. You can get multiple drives, go into multiple RAID arrays, um, go through, uh, you know, your different size. If you do need a storage drive, Right, you can select up to a 12 terabyte drive uh, as an extra storage drive. You can actually upload this, take the system up through, I wanna say uh, almost 50 terabytes of storage if you wanna configure all of, the, all of the systems that way. So I just wanted to show you this. So if you hit add to cart, um, then the next piece you would do, uh, we'll skip the accessories, although Adam did say 3D connections. By the way, we do sell 3D connection mice. So if you were to add one to your order, it would get the 5% discount. Uh, so it apply to that to that as well. So if you were to, to get the 3D connection space mouse or go all the way up to the 3D enterprise, you'd be able to add that to your order. Um, so if you're on your system and we're gonna go ahead and skip the accessories, um, 
what you will see at next step cart. So there's the monitors that you can select, but I know we're kind of hit for time. So here's where you would apply your coupon. All right, so coupon here. So that coupon code that you got, put that in here and hit apply and you'll see the 5% discount uh, appear. And now this system is way more than I would expect anyone to need because we put two RTX 8000s in there, but I just wanted to show you kind of how to, how to utilize the website, how we've got it configured, how to select the GPUs and why they matter. So with that, well, I'm going to toss it back to Adam to wrap us up. Yeah, and I think an important thing you kind of showed too um, is that you can take a configuration that we have set and then you can upgrade it, right? That, yep. That's like the, the general theme, right? Is that, you, you know, if, if you kind of find yourself sitting in a different bucket, I mean like intermediate bucket, but you do want a 5,000, you know, throw it in there or you want to change your RAM or you want to change, you know, whatever you want to change about it. You know, it's still yeah. customizable, but these are the minimum requirements for the basic intermediate and kind of advanced system. Yep. We, I, you know, I, we're, we're, we certify that these are going to do the workload you need to at the configs that we've spec them out. So if you need to upgrade from there, so be it. But I would have no qualms with this 3640 inside of Visualize. And you'll see that the 3640 intermediate, we default um, with an RTX 4000, uh, but the RTX 5000 is an option. And so, you know, Adam's talked about his experience with both um, as being, you know, uh, useful in, in, in both use cases. And so, you know, we give you that option to upgrade. Uh, thank you for bringing that up, Adam. Um, yeah. Mike, did you have anything you wanted to hit before we, uh, before we wrap it up and any kind of Q and A we need to hit Mike? No, I just want to thank you and Adam for having me here. There's a question about the A6000 and uh, those will be uh, generally available December 14th, uh, limited availability. And then you'll start seeing systems configured with those, uh, early next year. So, yep. Stuff, so, yeah. I, uh, keep, an, keep an eye out for that. And these systems will be certified with the new, uh, with the new A series uh, GPUs when they become available. Sweet.